I never prepare. It's always the flow of the energy of the people that are there. It, sh- it depends on who shows up. It, it depends on what downloads with me, basically. And so I come into these things, and my sense today is that people need a message that's going to come at the end of this. Uh, Kanye is, uh, uh, is helping me because even though I give broad, generalized, philosophical, spiritual-based things, I don't sit around and give people all the tools, as I've been told. I don't give all the people the tools they need on the psychological level to deal with issues like hurt, anger, pain, suffering, things like that. And not everybody is this spiritual warrior that could just say, oh, yeah, okay, I understand that. Let's move on. So I'm hoping that she can lay some some tools on the group at the end. And uh, as we do these Summer of Love broadcasts, I will have her ending each show uh, with little helpful suggestions and things you can do uh, that she uses in her practice of, of spiritually healing people mentally and physically and, and, and all kinds of problems that she does in her own private world. So enough on that. All I do is give love. So you guys will have to put up with that. I don't have a big philosophical, a lot of references and quotes. I, I'm just me. And I come to you very childlike and say, it's not, it's not that hard. It's not that complicated. It's really just simply about love. And I found that when you're born in the world, when your parents love you and your mother loves you, nobody ever had to teach you the meaning of that. A baby responds right away. First moment, a baby knows it's loved. And the same way a baby also knows it's not loved and it's rejected. And that does its damage for a lifetime. But you don't have to teach people to love. You actually have to teach people to hate and have prejudice against others. That's the world we're in where people are teaching fear and hate. So I'm trying to counterbalance that uh, with what I call the philosophy of just give love. The answer, whatever the whatever question anybody gives me, the answer is love. Well, what do you mean? No, the answer is love. Find the love in whatever the situation is. That's the answer. Somebody does you wrong. Somebody hurts you. Love is the answer. You got a bad boss. Love is the answer. You got a bad marriage. Love is the answer. And that sounds so simplistic that people can't follow it because they keep looking for, yeah, but, you know, but, you know, give me a technique, you know, uh, how do I go about this spirituality one-on-one? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Each of us are on a journey. Whether you know you bought a ticket or not, we're all on the same train. We're all trying to get to this mountain of enlightenment, wherever it's at. And then we're on that train long enough, we realize that we've always been on that mountain. There's no going to the mountain. There's only realizing that you are on the mountain. And then eventually you realize that, no, not only are you on the mountain, but you are the mountain. The mountain are us. We are one. And so it's strictly a matter of focusing your energies every day, not trying to deliberately solve all the world problems. Take care of you. Love you. Love your family. Love your neighbors. And if you can extend that to loving your enemies, you're changing the world. So that's where we're at. So how do you, because somebody has a question here about energy. How do you get your energy, your vibration level, where it's receptive to the, the good and the loving and the joyful and the peaceful aspects of your life? But it's all about energy, it's all about frequency, it's all about vibration. Just as fear, like right now, let's let's look at America and the rest of the world. There's a lot of fear out there about this coming election. Oh, if this guy is elected, the end of the world as we know it, the end America, and this other guy's elected, it doesn't matter which side you're listening to, it's all it's all gonna be terrible. Everybody's fearful. And so when people have fear, 
that brings out anger, that brings out they're wrong, we're right, the other side is bringing us to danger, we're safe, I don't want to hear your opinion, only mine matters. Don't go there this year or any year. I'm telling people, focus on proving who you are. Make yourself stronger, more loving every day, every moment. Regardless, if there's people in your life that are trying to make it different. And when you do those things which bring up your energy, that's the, the gist of this, do those things that bring up your energy, you will find love truly does conquer it all. It changes everything. So how do you get your energy up? The obvious way, of course, is prayer and meditation. And if you don't have a meditation technique, there are thousands out there, thousands of meditation techniques. They all work. There's some that are, I don't know, you listen to people that practice them. This is the best. There's none better. Kriya Yoga, that's the top. I mean, you know, Hamsa is good. The Om technique is, you know, it really gets down to it. It's like a carpenter arguing over a hammer, which hammer is the best. A good carpenter can use any hammer and build a great house. It's the carpenter, not the tool. And it's the same thing in meditation. It's not necessarily the meditation technique, although that helps. It's the meditator. It's a meditator meditating with alternative motives. For example, are you going to meditate because you're trying to seek powers? You want to be able to walk through a wall, read minds, uh, do a... a astral travel you want to uh, you want to be enlightened you want to be special you, 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 you know you want to whatever it is no that will limit your your results for the meditation and how those results manifest themselves you should be meditating for one purpose and one purpose only to love god find that god within and just love don't ask for anything in back. Don't ask for improved health. Don't ask for improved wealth. Don't ask for any gifts. In other words, that's treating God like Santa Claus. I love you, God. Can you do all this for me? I don't care if nothing's going right in your world. It's, it's, it's a mess. Just meditate and pray to give your love fully to the source and to be grateful for every gift that you've been given. And when I say gift, I'm not talking just about money, health, love, and family, all these great things. I'm talking about cancer, divorce, being in jail, being injured, all these things that happen to you, everything, absolutely everything in your life is given to you for one purpose, to help you evolve spiritually, to bring you closer to the awakening. So no matter what it looks like, oh, this looks evil, this looks terrible, uh, I'm going to jail, I'm getting divorced, uh, I'm, I'm ill, I'm dying, forget it. Look at the gift. What is this gift really trying to do? Reverend Bill says every gift is trying to make me a better spiritual being. It's trying to awaken me. So how does cancer awaken you? How does divorce awaken you? That's yours to examine. But if you look at it like me with cancer, uh, for those that know my story, my face has been operated on 14, 15 times over the last three years. This thing's been cut up, cut off, you know, amputated, everything you could do. Nose has been off three times. And every time, I've never been bitter. I don't get angry. Never once in my life, and this is a true story, never once in my life I ever questioned, why, Lord? Why is this happening to me? Why am I having all these things? Never. It's like, okay, God, help me discover the gift. And the gift of having this cancer, and now with these colon problems that I'm going through, all these issues that I'm enduring, is so I can find ways to deal with it, to heal it, and to find the gift in it. And when I'm Going through these things, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm thinking, like, why am I going through this now? How is that going to help someone else? And when people see what I've gone through and what I'm going through and continue to go through, 
uh, and they compare it to their own lives. They go, oh, okay, great, I understand. It's like me never having, you know, had a problem with alcohol. I don't drink. If I was to tell a group of people that were alcoholics to get sober, they're not going to listen to me too much about the virtues of being sober. They would listen to somebody that used to be a drunk, and now they're sober. So for me to talk to people about mental, spiritual, and physical health, if I've never experienced any of these problems, my words are going to fall short of, of giving any meaning and impact to anybody else. But if people see the, what I've gone through physically and they understand that, then they can identify with that and they realize that they too can also heal themselves. Because ultimately, all healing leads to spiritual healing. Let me say that again. All healing leads to spiritual healing. You think you're trying... You're working, if you're just working on the body, you're just working on the mind, the emotions, you're missing it because the, the vortex of all diseases, the, the focus of all disease comes from spiritual separation from the source. When you think you're separate from the divine and all these diseases, injuries, Things happen to you because of your separation. So the process of healing is to wake you up to the oneness of it all. Body, mind, and soul. Those aren't even separated. It is one. And when you can identify with that oneness, then you begin to truly heal at all levels. But if you're going to pray for the healing of the body, I'm telling you right now that you know, in 11 and a half years, I'll be 90 years old, if you can imagine that. Well, I'm sure that, you know, something's going to get my body. And if I'm praying at 90 years old, please, Lord, don't take me. What a waste. The body's going to die off no matter what I do, no matter how kind I am to it, no matter how much I love my body. Eventually, something's going to kill it. It's gone. But the spirit lives on. And for those who have had near-death experiences, you know that consciousness is instantaneous. There's no boom, you die, and there's a period of darkness, and you're just you're not there. No, it's there's no moment where you weren't. There's no time that you were not. When you left the body, the consciousness exists even more so than it did before, because now there's a greater awareness. You realize that you are not the body. That's actually a burden to you, that you are pure consciousness. And if you listen to enough of my talks, what I always say, pure consciousness is, the divine is, it's love. So when you realize pure consciousness, you're really realizing pure love within. And it's that pureness of love that heals you at all three levels. All three levels. Don't just focus on the body. In fact, I never... And this is going to come as a strange thing to say, but I've never asked God to heal me. No, really, I don't. I don't tell God what to do. God, I need this. God, I need that. Dude, never. I assume that the all-knowing God that is within me, that is me, knows my problem, knows my solution, and also didn't make a mistake by giving me a disease or giving me a problem. It wasn't a mistake. It was a gift. So if I tell God, thank you for the loving wife, thank you for the money, thank you for this, but man, uh, take away this health issue, uh, this is wrong. God didn't make a mistake. All those were gifts. They're all equal in value. It's what you get out of it. So don't, don't look for what is wrong with you and what's wrong with life and why things are happening to you. Stop asking why. Why does it matter? The only thing that truly matters is loving the divine in spite of or in gratitude of everything that happens to you. Because everything that happens to you happens to you for a reason. Whether you understand that reason or not, doesn't matter. Doesn't. So 
when I go around and I do my workshops, I spend about two hours, uh, maybe three sometimes, sometimes four, sometimes a three-day weekend. It's all about raising the energy level of the group. And I hope those that watch this on a video who are live with me now in this webinar are listening and feeling not the meaning of my words or the meaning of my stories, but feeling the energy behind them because that is being transmitted now. And if you're watching this on video and if you're totally totally in tune with the process of there is no separation. There's only now, there's only one place, one time. Even if this thing's on a video, there's only one time, one place. If you're watching this in the future now, it's still just now. The power's still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. And for you that join me in this, this little audience that we have here live, know that I am sending my love. I'm sending my healing energy. And if you truly, truly are in tuned, just open your heart, open your mind. The only thing holding people back from true spiritual, mental, and physical healing is their beliefs. If you believe this is impossible, you're right. If you believe it's, yeah, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Most people are kind of in between. They want to believe. They really do. And they can believe, well, maybe in two or three weeks down the road, this will add up and I'll be okay. Or maybe 30 days. But instantaneous people have trouble with it. Kinda and others have been in some of my live events, you know, that there are instantaneous healings. And you don't even have to be there. At some of our events in Europe and other places, uh, we sent energy and love to somebody that wasn't there, wasn't aware they're being prayed for by the group. And yet when they were contacted during a break or lunch or something, we found out that as soon as we sent this energy to them, their pain went away. They were comfortable. They were happy. Things happened. Because no matter what happens, love is real. And whether you believe it or not, it helps you know, like placebo effect, but ultimately, even though the placebo effect has to give way to the power of love itself, and we discovered that because it was several people. In fact, the church uh, down in Southern California, we sent somebody was in uh, uh, in the hospital. They were unconscious. They were in a coma. Uh, the minister down there was telling me to ask if we could pray for them. They're in a coma. They couldn't wake up. And there was no hope of them waking up. And she wanted to know if we could send something remotely. And I was telling her, I said, there's no remote. <laughs> there's only now. There's only here, right? And, and we sent the group. There was about 35, 40 people there. It was in the Santa Anita church down there, wherever that church was called. And several days later, after we the group sent this energy, I got a message from the church saying this person was out of the coma and they were feeding themselves, you know, and they were going through therapy and they were going to be recovering. So you don't have to be 100% believing, but that speeds up the process. It aids in, in, the, in, in, the, in the process and it makes it happen. But the power of love itself, if you believe in the power of love itself, even if you don't believe it in yourself, or you, you, but you believe in the power of love, the potentiality of the power of love is healing. It works. In fact, even if you don't believe in it, it works. That's why praying for people in jail or praying for people that are in trouble or praying for praying for your spouse and going through a divorce, praying for your child, praying for anybody, a, a selfless prayer for others is pure energy and it heals and it changes people and it changes the sender of that love as well. You cannot send more love than the universe blesses you back. You always give more back than you give. 
And conversely, the opposite is true. You hate somebody, you're angry at somebody, you put a curse on somebody, you don't wish them well. All that anger and negativity comes right back at you. More so stronger than you sent it out. So if you wonder why you're never happy and you hate people in your life and you haven't forgiven people in your life, realize that everything you send out, you create for yourself. So if you're sending love, forgiveness, peace, joy, you're going to find yourself bathed in it, surrounded by it. The universe is going to literally love you back. That's why when you tell people to forgive people, I can't forgive that person. They they molested me when I was a child. They did this to me. They I can I tell them, don't forget. You know, there's a lesson there. Don't forget. But forgiving them is not about them. It's about you. Because when you forgive them, you're cutting all the strings and ties, and chains and ropes and handcuffs they've had on you all that time. They're holding you back. That anger and hate towards them, that's your curse. Let it go. And when you forgive somebody, it doesn't mean you call them up on the phone or send them an email or go visit them and say, I forgive you, because that's the ego. Just forgive people. They'd have to never know you forgave them. Just forgive them. Send them love. Even if it's hard to do, send them love. Because obviously they were ignorant when they did this to you. They didn't know any better. And if they were, if they truly understood you and felt you and were closer to God, they wouldn't have done it. So they need help. Send it to them. But like when I was a volunteer chaplain at Folsom Prison, there's people there. Yeah, you can forgive them, but you never want to let them out of the jail cell because, you know, they deserve to be there. They're still dangerous people. So just because you're forgiven somebody doesn't make them wonderful people all of a sudden. What it makes is you a better person. You're beginning the journey of self-healing because holding anger and hate towards others makes you sick. You know what else makes you sick? Is holding shame and guilt and anger at your own actions, at your own self. Well, I should have never let this happen to me. I, I knew better. I'm shamed about it. No. Nope. Forgive yourself. Most important person to forgive, you. Forgive you. You want to heal? Forgive you. You want to heal? Love you. Love your enemy. Love, love. Forgive, forgive. And then you kind of naturally flow into another place called gratitude. Because when you're grateful, you're grateful for everything that's happened to you, including some of the, the yucky stuff, you know, the stuff that, oh, I don't want that, this is uncomfortable. Be grateful for even that because it's awakening you. It is leading you to more spiritual pastures. It's leading you to a place of more love. So sometimes we have to go through suffering. It's interesting. I got a new book coming out, and I've been saying that for a long time, but it's a work in progress because I keep adding stuff to it. But I finally changed the dedication page. I'm dedicating, the ded dedication says, dedicated to all my teachers. And then below that, it lists pain, suffering, love, forgiveness, all these different things. Those were all my teachers. All those things taught me, not just love, but pain and suffering as well. They've taught me how to love. That is the bottom line. Heal yourself. Heal the love. All right. Somebody was asking some questions. Uh, trying to see if there's some questions on there. Somebody, do you have any recommendations for beginners in breath work, yoga, meditation? I think uh, whoever answered that, great. That's a good question. There are a lot of teachers out there. Who teach, actually, I'm a certified uh, Kriya Yoga teacher. Korea Yoga, authorized and teach it through the Hamsa organization. Uh, and I teach other things. But I I personally have found 
that any practice, be it Kriya Yoga, which is a very powerful medication, or or uh, Om technique, or the Hamsa technique, or there's several others out there that are, they all work. Somebody's got their mic on. They all work. Again, it's you. So if if you're a Christian, let's talk about that. If you're a Christian and you don't want to get involved in, you know, f- mantras that are in Tibetan or Indian or some other foreign language or, you know, whatever, and, and you, you're happy being a Christian, but you want to meditate as well, there's a real simple meditation from the 13th, 14th, 15th century that a lot of these monks did uh, living in monasteries. And they would take a, a picture, not a photograph, because, <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a signed photograph of Jesus. No, a picture drawing, you know, like a Jesus or whatever. And they would take that picture and they'd put it in their little meditation area, their little cell where they lived in this monastery. They'd have a candle there at night. And they would stare at that picture of Jesus with great intensity, not blinking, just staring. And looking at the eyes of Jesus, and looking at the face of Jesus, and in their mind, their mantra, they didn't know it was a mantra, in their mind they're saying, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Or I love you, God. I love you. And they would just mentally be chanting it. No other word to say it. They were saying it. It's a chant. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And just over and over, focusing on the face and the eyes, and just giving that image so much love, the image actually comes alive. You'll actually see animation. You'll actually see the the eyes looking at you. It's unbelievable the results you can get from such a simple meditation. You can do this with your eyes open. Very simple meditation. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever you can do, it works. You can do the same thing with a with an image of Buddha, Krishna, Mary, Jesus. I mean, it doesn't matter. God is in everything, and God is one. But however you find your focus, do so. Now, if you want to do a meditation in a little more Indian style or more Eastern style, you you got the Om technique, which is really simple, and you got Levels that make it harder and softer. Probably the softest way is is just uh, you close your eyes, look at your spiritual eye, focus on your forehead, and then just breathe it in. And in your mind, you're just silently saying, Om. And then breathe down, breathe out, just visualize the energy going up and down. And then Om. Just om, om. There's a lot more complicated. I'm making it as simple as possible. You can do the same thing. Substitute with the om with hong sa, which means I am, hong sa. Or you can just say, I am, I am. Um, I am he, I am God, I am love. Any of these mantras done with a focus on the spiritual eye, sitting with your spine as straight as you can get. If you're old, you're probably going to have trouble sitting in the Indian posture, lotus posture. You have trouble sitting in the floor, then sit in a chair. Sit on a cushioned couch if you have to. Just visualize your skull, your, uh, your, your, your spine as being straight. Okay? Just picture it as being straight. So, focusing on And any holy object, holy thought, thoughts of Jesus, thoughts of God, thoughts of Buddha. What I ask nobody to change their religious beliefs. If you if you're Christian, don't change. Be Christian. You know what? Enjoy it. Focus on it. Just if Jesus is going to going to do it for you, that's enough for you. Wonderful. Don't change. Just love Jesus more. Love God more. It's all about loving. It's all about loving. But realize that God has no religion. God has no chosen special people. We are all one. 
We're all his children. The heavenly father, the heavenly mother, it's God, it's one. But I'm telling you even one step beyond that, we are that. And as long as we keep identifying God as separate, I pray to God, so God's out here, right? As long as you keep separating yourself from the source, and you're not truly there yet. But there yet could take eons. Because as long as you still believe in your personal history, your personal story, you have an identification. I'm Reverend Bill. I'm Kent. I'm Clay. I'm whatever. I'm Janice. It doesn't matter. You identify with it. And I can tell you identify with it just like you can tell I identify with my, my history because I got a body. If you identify with the ego, you have a body. Whether it's a body of flesh and blood, an angel body, a body of light, a rainbow body, uh, you identify separate from the source. And when you finally wake up totally, there's no more body. There's just a, you're absorbed back into what you are and always will be and always were. You are the divine source. You are the ultimate beginning and the end. It's you. It's God. So if you're out there looking for a meditation, there are teachers out there. There are books out there. I don't want, I'm, I'm not here to lead you down that path because in case you wonder why, when I've, when I've taught people how to meditate, like in India, as people want it in other places, then the people, they want to follow me. They want, they, they, I, you're my teacher, you're my guru. I'm not neither. I'm here just to sell love. That's it. I'm just this crazy Irishman that believes in love. I don't want an organization. I don't want a following. I don't want praise. I don't want any of that. But if I can teach you to love and to share that love and to give that love to others, I've done my purpose.